this Libra season, with this focus on our relationships, there is going to be a lot of focus on forgiveness. <laughs> Hi friends, welcome back to Meryl's Mystic. I'm Meryl and if you're new here, I am a mystical relationship coach and I empower witches, bitches, and dudes to complete themselves in order to have healthier soulmate relationships and more purpose-filled lives. And today we're here to talk about Libra season. Uh, <laughs> Libra season will be taking place between September 22nd and October 22nd, 22nd, 23rd, depending on where you are in the world. And Libra season will be a much welcome change after the very structured, task-oriented energy of Virgo season. And the one thing to be aware of is that during this Libra season, we will be experiencing Mercury in retrograde in Libra. We're experiencing our Mercury retrogrades in the air signs this season, or this year, excuse me. So it will have us kind of in our heads about things, um, but it will be things that we need to think about. And for Libra, it will be about our relationships. And so be prepared for uh, a little bit of the stirring of the pot. In your relationships so if there's things that aren't being said or any issues that are being ignored this mercury retrograde in Libra could easily bring those up and mercury is the planet of communication so when it's retrograde there does tend to be some miscommunications happening and so make sure that you're really being open and honest with those that are closest to you that's really important and to double check communications like I mean in the sense of making sure people understand what you're what you mean when you say when you speak to them when you are communicating with them so if you feel like there's all of a sudden some tension in your relationship because communication isn't working so well pause <laughs> breathe don't react don't just fly off the handle and be like well how could you think that I think that um, it's a good time to say well wait I need you to make sure that you're hearing me correctly. Well, wait, can you let, can you repeat back to me what you just heard? Because I want to make sure that I'm communicating clearly to you and I want to make sure that you, that we're on the same page and that you understand what I'm saying to you. So there could be a lot of that stuff coming up for Libra season. So Mercury will be entering retrograde on the 26th, 27th of September. And we've already been in the shadow since the 6th, since the last new moon in Virgo. And then it will go direct October 18th after November 3rd will be out of the shadow. So a lot of the energy of Libra season will be a focus on our relationships. And very much so it will be... It should be focusing on nurturing the relationships that are, are most important to you. In Virgo season, you should have gotten some grounding and you should have been able to kind of prioritize yourself and your world a little better. And so hopefully you've kind of realized, you know, maybe there are certain people in your life that you just kind of have drifted apart from each other and that's okay. And it's just time to focus on the people who want to be in your life, not necessarily the ones who make you kind of feel like a second thought or the ones that um, have just decided they don't want to be around you at all. This is not, this is definitely <laughs> a time to like review are we in healthy relationship with ourselves and with each other? And you don't want to be with somebody who doesn't want to be with you. So definitely focus on being with the people that want to be with you and the people that fill you up with love and light and energy. And we already had some of that with this Pisces full moon. This Pisces full moon right at the end of Virgo season on the 20th, on September 20th, really helped kind of usher in this this feeling, this, uh, this focus on needing to make sure that you are doing things with people or doing activities with yourself that, that re-energize you, that fill you up with energy, that, that ignite you, uh, that are the things that remind you 
of how beautiful life is and how um, and why you came to earth and chose to be human and that's really gonna carry into Libra season so Libra season for me um, I always think of like pink that's why I'm like wearing some my pinks today and in my more pinky makeup I have more pinky nails like I love um, color association with the energies of the seasons um, stone association I'll probably be wearing um, my rose quartzes and my pink rod rhododendrite I think it's I think that's how you say rhododendrite it's just a lot of that is because uh, Libra like Pisces uh, is the other sign that I feel like really looks at life through rose colored glasses you know there's this um, they say that Aquarius is the most evolved air sign and that Aquarius is usually good about getting in touch with their emotions I feel like Aquarius is actually better at not letting negative things affect them and Libra is actually a little bit more on the positive side they are represented by the scales so and they are the only um, archetype that is not a living thing which is interesting um, and so I have met Libras certain Libras that over the years that are just like oh we're boring or oh you know there's just like nothing exciting about us or they're like you know they feel like they have this reputation of being like cold um, or too logical and I just don't find that to be true all the Libras in my life are some of the most loving people that uh, I've known um, and uh, def Libra definitely like has a reputation of being can be like maybe a little more flighty or a little bit um, of an airhead all air signs kind of have that uh, quality every now and then um, especially Gemini and Libra um, but Libra is the most forgiving sign I found like almost to a fault I feel like I see some of these like loving Libras that are just like such gems of people and they like don't value themselves enough they they so easily push themselves aside and that they easily get taken advantage of by those people around them who know that they'll just like say yes and do these things and that you can just step on them and they'll like eventually take you back so if you have Libras in your lives like don't do that <laughs> uh, show them the same courtesy of forgiveness because uh, I feel like um, some Libras uh, aren't what's the word I'm looking for um, Libra energy can be not as stable like they can they can appear to not maybe be um, as like stable as an as like an earth sign um, but I feel like they we should be returning this like courtesy that they give all of us of like acceptance and forgiveness so whoever the Libras are in your life like just try to focus on their good qualities and forgive them when they're you know when you're maybe feeling like they're not tapping into their good qualities like you need to we need to hold more space for our Libras because Libra holds so much space for us without even realizing it um, and they the energy of them is very diplomatic they they want things to be fair they're really good at seeing both sides of the situation um, empowered Libras tend to be really strong in themselves and just kind of like when they see that things aren't gonna serve them or they see that things don't align with them they're like mm, don't care just moving on um, and I feel like that really carries into um, Aquarius where Aquarians really quickly off the bat are just like if it's not working for me like forget you I'm not even dealing with it it takes Libras a little bit longer to be in that strength but man once like once you see them really step into their power it's like such a beautiful thing uh, so hug your Libras <laughs> tell them how much you love them tell them how beautiful they are uh, because we need them we really do and I it makes me so sad <laughs> that Libras in the past are like I'm a Libra it's boring like no it's not it's not it's just in society at large in this world we so easily write off kindness for weakness and that they are some of the kindest most accepting people and most forgiving uh, so 
they, they're here to teach us something. So Libra is represented by justice in the tarot and the major arcana. And as you can see, justice is pretty perfect for Libra. We were talking about them being very diplomatic and being able to see both sides of the story. And we have the scales represented here and then we have the sword representing air. Um, and as you can see, like, I feel like this is a good reminder of like what Libra can be when they're in their full power and strength. And I hope that um, you got some of that infused into you in Virgo season. This is all these seasons have really been leading up to us being in our power and being our unapologetic selves. And now it's time to like really love that. And I think like notice that there's like the crown. Um, I just kind of noticed that there's also like the shroud here and the pillars and that is very um, reflective of the high priestess. So um, even though air signs tend to be very cerebral, remember that you we all have intuition and it's just about how we tap into that differently. Um, and just seeing the signs of when things like feel good or when things feel icky. Um, and so <laughs> It's, it's the scales. It's like, well, what do I want to give my time and attention to? Like, how is it really making me feel? This Libra season, with this focus on our relationships, there is going to be a lot of focus on forgiveness. The forgiveness that we offer to each other is not always for the other person. Sometimes we have to forgive people for ourselves and for our own peace of mind. Because sometimes the people that... Um, we feel like betray us or hurt us. They don't always deserve our energy and our time of like going to them and saying, Hey, I really forgive you for doing this thing, especially if they're not like coming to you and being like, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Um, sometimes we have to forgive people without even getting any sort of acknowledgement or apology from that person. When I have to forgive people um, for myself and I don't have a way of telling them specifically, um, and forgiveness work takes a long time. Sometimes you can try to forgive people for years and it, it just, and sometimes even when you do forgiveness work for those people, uh, it doesn't, <laughs> sometimes the hurt can be so deep that it's hard to let go. So, so for yourself, just start practicing this. Don't expect it to happen right away, but a good um, practice to implement when you're doing forgiveness work is letter writing that you don't send. So I've written a lot of letters to a lot of people that I don't send. A lot of time I burn them in full moon rituals um, to just like let it go. Let it go into the universe, send them, you know, blessings. Uh, it's just about turning around the energy so that we're not focusing on this like revenge or ill will or like wanting them to hurt the way that we hurt. It's so easy to do that and that it just brings you into your lower vibrations and I, we're better than that. <laughs> You're better than that. You wouldn't be here if you weren't trying to live a higher vibration life. Um, and I am trying to live a higher vibration life all the time, but it's a practice. It is not something that you just like reach a higher vibration. You're just like, I'm up here all the time and uh, nothing else bothers me. No, because we're still human. We came here to have human experiences and human experiences come with the pain and the shadow and it shows and we have to experience that so that we can find our light and find the beauty in, in life in general. So if you have any more questions about forgiveness work or how to do that, please reach out to me. Um, this is, I love, I'm really excited for Libra season. I really was excited for the Pisces full moon because this really speaks to like my calling in life and how I just really want to help us all be in better relationships with each other in the world. And it really starts with having better relationships with ourselves. So if you don't know how to start forgiving other people, maybe write a letter to yourself and forgive yourself about whatever mistakes you might have made in the past, things that you might have treated yourself wrong. Um, you know, there's just, it really starts with, with you. And so I really um, Im implore you to do something, some sort of forgiveness work during Libra season, whether it's for yourself or for others, or, or maybe 
you need to actually speak forgiveness to your partner or your parent or your child or your friend, you know? And so there should be lots of opportunities for this, but make sure you're also doing your, your best to discern where, like why, like your motives also behind it. Why do you want to forgive them? Does this person even deserve any of my energy if they are coming to me saying, you know, I'm sorry, um, you know, I miss you, I want to be back in your life. It's like, well, we got to recognize where am where am I now? Like I I appreciate it. I you know I I I let's squash it. But a lot of the time, things change because they're supposed to. Things change because we can't go backwards. And it's really nice to have some nostalgia and some good feelings about things. But we also have to remember um, our boundaries and remember why certain people just aren't in our lives anymore. And that's okay. And we just want to wish them well and wish them well on their path because we're all on our own paths too. It's really about focusing on your own path and what you need to heal and to forgive and to live your best life and how to protect yourself and how to um, tap into the joy and abundance that that is all around you. Uh, so I really am sending you so many happy, loving blessings for Libra season. I think it's going to be a really great one. Um, the first day of Libra season is also the autumn equinox. So we're moving into fall here in the northern hemisphere. Uh, so I'm really uh, excited for some different energy. It was, you know, it's been an intense couple years. Uh, it was an intense summer. And so just give yourself some time and some space. Hold space for yourself and and don't don't push yourself too far, okay? There's plenty of time for that. This is about being a little gentler and a little more loving with you. All right. Thank you so much for being here and let's get into your telescopes. Hi Sagittarius, <laughs> how are you? Um, I'm sorry, I'm laughing. Um, I feel like you guys can relate to this or at least understand. Uh, one of my closest friends is a Sagittarius and uh, she she knows how to, um, to, def to fight. I feel like Sagittarius know <laughs> How to fight, which is interesting because you guys are also the like most positive sign out there. But like, when you see things like be like people being wronged, you're right there to say, "Hey, not cool. Like this isn't happening. Not being tolerated." And I definitely have a lot of Sagittarius influence in my chart, and I. I am totally a Gryffindor <laughs> and I want to stand up for people and um, I try not to fight with people on the internet that much but it's whenever I see people attack other people I'm just like listen here <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> oh man I yeah just got into a little you know I was taking a break from videoing I was like checking my TikTok. Um, watching this gal, uh, I think she's, oh, she's like the Omaha cat late, no, like the Omaha aunt, fat aunt or something like that. She always starts her videos like sitting here getting my fat bitch on and she talks about, um, she's a white woman and she talks about privilege and how that shows up in our society. Um, and was talking about a certain news story and, and, and how it's connected to, to privilege and, and she was right. And, uh, a gal on there had a something that she thought was a fact and then someone tried to correct her and she called this person a Karen and I said okay says the Karen like you're literally the one being the Karen and as I shared like she's saying she's talking about facts I share the definition of Karen so she was talking about facts and it just got to the point where and I and when I'm talking about white privilege especially like white women privilege um, I spell it with W H Y T E because you can get it, it can be it can set off alarms on the like stupid algorithms that aren't actually being used to protect anybody 
and uh, it got to the point where she was just, uh, and I, I don't feel like I was like, I, I was being sassy, um, but I didn't feel like I was being like, hey you, it was like, I feel like I was kind of just reflecting back to her, her behavior, and the only thing she could do was tell me that I was a bad speller, and that I was acting like a child, and I'm just like, okay. <laughs> I just kept being like, okay, you should know, and and at one point I was just like, wow, sister, like, the world must, life must be really hard for you, and it just, I love that the timing is that I'm talking to you guys, because I feel like Sag, Sagittarius, you would be right there with me. I texted my Sag friend, I was like, girl, you wouldn't believe this, and she's like, girl, let me tell you about this Karen situation today, uh, so, um, I think, uh, and it's funny because a lot of, uh, what's coming up for Libra season in like the relationship stuff is that we're going to be reflecting a lot about our, you know, our relationships with others. But like a lot of these reflections are going to be about like our relationships with ourselves and how we feel about ourselves. And I used to like get really worked up when people would just like fire back at these things. But now I'm just so confident in who I am and my morals in life and and my viewpoints and my beliefs that the last and I don't do this very often anymore because it's just like not worth the energy energy to like you're not don't finding the foolish people you look foolish sort of thing but it's getting to the point where like they their responses are just so ridiculous <laughs> that you're just like uh, okay man like, whatever you want to believe, that's fine, because nothing, uh, like, your opinion, it, like, just like my, what I'm saying to you, unfortunately, isn't going to change your view, and what you're saying to me isn't going to change your view. Like, that's the unfortunate part about the social media stuff, and the arguing on there, is that no one's really seeing the air of their ways, no one's really seeing, like, another side of the story, um because it all just makes us all brace up against things. Um, the one person I do see who is making some really positive change online is Jeffrey Marsh. And they are this beautiful non-binary, they're like a love activist, I want to say. And, and they do personal life coaching and all that kind of stuff, but their content is just so beautiful. And they just come from this like beautiful place of love and being held. And they are the one profile on there like I I just look up to them so much because I see more comments on their page responses about actually changing people's views uh, for on trans and non-binary people because the way that they record the way they speak to people is just so filled with love and they hold so much space for people that it, it is one of the most beautiful things I've seen and, and it really shows like what can be done with social media that that people reach out to them and and tell them how they've changed people's views on on just how who non-binary trans people are and and how to treat your children if that's who they are and I just I, I really encourage you to go uh, follow them uh, at Jeffrey Marsh, or it might be the Jeffrey Marsh. It might just be Jeffrey Marsh. Uh, but they are, they're my, they're like my hero of 2021, and I hope that one day I get to connect with them um, and and just like learn some secrets about how they just exude such love. When, when also at the same time they're getting a lot of like pushback and a lot of a lot of hate still because there's a lot of ignorance and hate out there and 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 it just the they handle it with such beauty and grace and I feel like this is coming up while I'm I'm recording with you Sag is because I feel like you, if anybody else is capable of this, it's Sagittarius. You are capable of, of standing up for what's right, but doing it in such like a beautiful and graceful way also. And sometimes, and I think 
And I think some Sagittarius are like, what? Me? You know? Because, like, Sagittarius can also be known to be very, like, loud and brash. But um, I, I think that there's... I also know them to be eloquent at times and be able to express uh, express certain ideas and opinions and views and, and messages in such a way um, that I feel like if you really like focused on that and honed into it, uh, that you would be able to tap into your innate positivity and love that you ultimately exude uh, more than anything, more, more than the fighting. So let's see what else Libra season has for you. Uh, Queen of Pentacles in reverse. Um, I hope you liked my s story sharing because I, I'd like to share stories and experiences with you guys because I feel like that's how we are going to relate to each other more. Um, please let me know if, if you experience this also, if you uh, have experienced similar things while out in the internet land. So first up we have the Queen of Pentacles in reverse. And I'm, I'm trying to figure out like, I feel like this is coming off a little differently than normal. There's definitely like some structure here um, and, and, a, and a sense of abundance. So it's almost like, um, it's like me sitting here telling you like that you have this beauty and grace within you and you being like, no, no, I like me. Come on. Like, I, I don't know about that. Like, do I sort of thing? And it's like, yeah, like accept these like beautiful qualities about you. And I feel like Libra seasons doing that a lot is like letting us reflect back. What, what are our beautiful qualities? What are, what do we need to focus on? How do we focus on these more positive qualities within us and, and love that? Um, the Queen of Pentacles is all about abundance. It, in reverse, there can be it's can be a, some internal things happening. So that is like an internal ex exception, uh, acceptance. Excuse me, an internal acceptance of 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 your abundance and and not just like abundance in the physical. I think that's why this kind of threw me off because the pinnacles are so about the physical and for you it doesn't feel like it's like in in your like physical sphere. It's like what exists like within your physical self. What exists within your physical self. And there is something too about like that this is an opportunity for you because this can be also referencing the page of pentacles and page of pentacles is all about like opportunities new opportunities for for growth and for uh evolution and and evolving and how um can things that are innately in you help you continue to grow and evolve and it's funny because also we have the 10 of cups in reverse so again there is something about like needing to really recognize how blessed, gifted you are. Um, it's like, ins insert the adjective here. So many words that could describe this, how, how really like emotionally tapped in you are also all, all the Sagittarius I know are, are, are emotional people. And there's nothing wrong with that. I feel like it's just about, um, discerning, what emotions are happening when and what kinds of emotions that you can call on in certain in certain um, situations. Because as a fire sign, it can be really easy to just like react and go into like intensity. And you are so much more complex and multifaceted than just your fire intensity. Okay. I want you to remember that. All the animals have now entered the room. Uh, let's keep looking. Oh, interesting. <laughs> Ten of Pentacles in reverse. Again, like, there's, there's, these are all, it's so funny. I feel like uh, already, like, everyone's readings, like, the first three cards are basically, like, the same message. That it's just, like, knock, knock, knock. Like, hello. Like, it's like, Hello. Look at, like, look at all these great things you have. 
you have all the great things and you can manifest all the great things and you can create all the great things and you have all this greatness within you. So why are you not letting yourself feel that? Why are you not accepting that? Why are you not loving that? So much of this Libra season is going to be about love, man. Like, <laughs> like age of Aquarius, hair, you know, the hair, the musical, dancing in the field, love of letting the sunshine in, letting the love in, recognizing how abundant you are and how you have everything that you need. And if you don't have everything you need, what it's almost like you you're gonna have to figure out what what you need what do you need and how can you get that let's glance a little bit deeper uh, the hangman in reverse six of cups and the four of pinnacle <laughs> so um, the hangman in reverse it can mean so many, like the hangman, it, they come up in so many different ways. Um, the hangman is kind of this like sacred pause. It's very much, I feel like very much like the chrysalis, the cocoon, uh, before the butterfly emerges. And when it's in reverse, it almost feels like, again, there's like this resistance of just sitting and being. Because I feel like you guys can get really busy and like caught up with like what you're doing and where you're going and what you got to work on. And there is a part of Libra season where there just needs to be some like nurturing. Some just like nurturing, some sweetness, some like reminding you of the beauty of life. The, the other thing that comes with this card is like a sense of purity and not in like the biblical sense or the... Christian church sense of purity, purity in the sense of like childlike wonder, healing your inner child, reminding yourself that you're fun, that you love fun and that you can have fun. It's interesting that the four of pentacles is coming up after this queen and the 10 of pentacles in reverse. Cause it's almost like, again, you're like holding on to this resistance. He's like, I got it. I got it all right here. It's all like, I, I, I worked on it. I built it all up. It's all right here. And like, I can't let it go. It's, it's almost like if you've been uh, working on your finances too, when a lot of pentacles come up, it can speak to money and finances um, and career. And if you've been building your career up and, and, and you've been working really hard for a while, it's sometimes when we're saving we can end up swinging like too far into this the save you know sacrifice place where we can we can risk getting into like even though we have everything that we need and we're like you know i feel like it's you have a i feel like this is for people who like has been working on their career building their career has been making money getting the raises you have everything that you need you you're comfortable, you're paying your bills. So why are you still like holding on to your, your money? Like it's going to go somewhere, like you're going to lose it. Cause then you risk just not enjoying everything that you've worked for. You've worked really hard to get to this place. So go out and enjoy it a little bit. I think a big part of this too, is just recognizing what you have. Because recognizing what you have is such a key to, like, having gratitude for what you have is such a key to attracting more of what you want. Um, and, and holding on to what you have, too. Uh, we can get so caught up in what we don't have. And I feel like they really just want you to, like, even, like, it almost feels like you just need to, like, sit in, like, your space, in your favorite space in your house, go sit in nature, and just look around and, like, find things to be thankful for, okay? I'm thankful for the food in my fridge. I'm thankful for my comfortable bed. Go outside. I'm thankful for the trees that provide us oxygen. I'm thankful for the sun that provides us energy and, and vitamin D. 
um, and life. I'm thankful for the beauty in the flowers. I'm thankful for the roof over my head. There are very simple things that you can do to just remind yourself. And also, like, it's okay. Like, if there's a lot of this, like, just being. Like, just be. Remembering that you're human and that you came here to also enjoy being human. We didn't just come here to work, y'all. Okay? <laughs> so, it's time for a break. Ooh. That's the second time I saw that card shuffling, so we're definitely going to do that one. It says, Unlock Your Magic has a key on it. I've never, I don't know if I've seen this one. Dearest you, going the extra mile to achieve your dreams and putting in some overtime will reap big rewards. <laughs> now is the time for you to act, to stir up some energy and put those plans into action. There are many windows of opportunity that open but close quickly when you don't take the risk and go for it. Today, be confident that your hard work, will, hard work will pay off and you'll feel that satisfaction and fulfillment of reaching your desired outcome. It might turn out even better than you expected. Isn't that amazing? Remember, however much work you're willing to put in, we will match it tenfold on our end. Everyone over here is rooting for you to win the game of life. So just do it. Loving you so, so much. Because are you working hard and saving your money to just keep working hard? What's your end game? How do you want to celebrate? How do you want to enjoy what you've worked for? I, you love adventure, Sagittarius. You love to travel. <laughs> It's time, it might be time for a vacation. It, it, it's time to celebrate everything that you've been building. Okay, you've built it up. Now sit in it, revel in it. Just do it, just be it, okay? <laughs> okay, I love you Sagittarius. Thank you for being here and I will see you for Scorpio season. Thank you so much for being here. I so appreciate all of your support. I'm sending you so much love. If you made it this far, please like and subscribe. Please hit that notification bell. Share with a friend. Go follow things at Meryl's Mystic on pretty much all platforms. And join me for my lives on Facebook and Instagram. My lives for October will be the 1st, the 15th, and then I will be doing a live for uh, Halloween Samhain on the 31st. And I'll see you soon. Bye. Jesus, I